In 1585, the English attempted their first colony in North America at Roanoke Island along the North Carolina coast, but they weren't the first to try to establish a permanent presence on the continent. As early as 1539, Spaniard Hernando de Soto was exploring the interior of what was to become the southeastern United States. He was seeking riches and fame, and he documented his journey. After additional Spanish exploration, Spain started a settlement at St. Augustine in present-day Florida in 1565. In 1566, using de Soto's journal, 120 men under the command of Captain Juan Pardo entered western North Carolina. They had big plans, plans that would change the course of history. on the side of Fort San Juan, the first European settlement in the interior of North America, located near Morganton in western North Carolina. Pardo was brought to this location by the DeSoto Expedition Notes, describing an Indian village called Jawara where, quote, its chief was so prosperous that he gave the Christians whatever they asked for, unquote. Spain had a different plan for supporting the settlements in the New World. They would receive little aid. The goal of La Florida was to send resources back to Spain and not the other way around. So if your colonial operation is not you know, basically sending money back to the crown, then it's a losing proposition. Juan Pardo arrived at the new Spanish capital of Santa Elena, located on the coast of present-day South Carolina, in July 1566. He was tasked by Governor Pedro Menendez with solving a big problem, the piracy of Spanish ships loaded with silver in the Gulf of Mexico. When Pardo arrived at Santa Elena, one of the problems that the governor had was that he didn't have enough food for Pardo and his men. He, you know, wondered how he was going to support them there. The, the original mission was to set up a roadway from Santa Elena all the way to northern Mexico and this roadway would connect the silver mines, the really rich silver mines in northern Mexico, with the Atlantic so that they didn't have to ship all the gold and silver through the, uh, through the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, because that's where they were vulnerable to pirates. Juan Pardo left Santa Elena on December 1st, heading northward, eventually switching to northwest. He passed through many Indian towns, telling them through an interpreter that they were subjects of Spain and the Pope, and that they were to build houses for the Spanish and set aside corn for Spanish use. At length, they reached the Indian town of Jawara. The Indians lived in western North Carolina for thousands of years before the Spanish came. Jawara was an important cultural center for the tribes in the region. It was a medium-sized town, but it had a mound and was extremely important to its region. Chiefs would come to Jawara to converse about problems and changes in their tribes. Well, when Juan Pardo rode into uh, Jawara, it was actually uh, New Year's Eve, 1566. So when he rode in, it would have just been another cold night in a Native American village. He would have probably seen people hunkered around uh, campfires and, you know, stay, or hiding indoors, covered in furs, trying to stay warm, but probably just the usual things that were going on at that time. This town was at the foot of the mountains, and since snow had fallen, Pardo and his men had to stay in Jawara for two weeks. During this time, he and his men attempted to teach the Indians about Christianity, while they built a fort which Pardo named Fort San Juan. He left 30 of his men at the fort under the command of Sergeant Hernando Moyano, provisioning them with ammunition and little else. He then continued his journey westward until he was called back to Santa Elena to help defend it against a possible French attack, cutting short his mission. Moyano and his men prospected potential mining sites from Fort San Juan with the help of the Indians. He fought with the Chisca and other Indian tribes, and like De Soto before him, made enemies for the Spaniards along the way. Pardo made a second attempt of his mission beginning September 1, 1567. He followed a coastal route before turning inland. He traveled back to Fort San Juan where he learned that Moyano and some men were surrounded by Indians at a second small fort they had built at Chiaja. After rescuing his men, he then continued traveling in search of a route to Mexico. 
When Pardo reached the town of Satapo in present-day eastern Tennessee on October 16th, he learned of a plot against him and his men. The very next day, they started back for Santa Elena. In an effort to protect the Spanish position and inland route, he constructed and manned forts at several Indian towns. In all, there were six forts built, one in Tennessee, three in North Carolina, and two in South Carolina. His second expedition lasted six months. During Pardo's return to Santa Elena, the Indians of the region were becoming increasingly hostile toward the Spanish soldiers and their demands for food and slave labor. They gathered and organized an uprising to completely destroy the Spanish forts and expel them from the region. The Spanish occupied and, and established their colony for only about 18 months um, before they were burned out and killed to a man. And this happened not only at this colony, but at the total colonies that they, con that they constructed at that period. All at once, overnight, burned down and killed. So it was a really well organized, but between multiple areas, multiple tribes working together to send the Spanish a very strong message, you're not welcome here, don't come back. Uh, there were only 120 soldiers who came into Western North Carolina with Juan Pardo. Of those, only one survived. The one survivor returned to Santa Elena and told the story of the disaster. Um, we know from the one account from the Spaniard uh, who uh, talked about uh, Fort San Juan being destroyed, um, he said he had heard nothing you know, from the other forts and none of them ever show up in the Spanish records again. So we, we have to assume that they were destroyed as well. And there's a document of the names of all, the, all of Pardo's soldiers, and beside every one of them, except the one man who made it back, it says deceased. So we, we, we have to assume that, that the Indians you know, successfully destroyed all of the forts. This marked a turning point in Spain's attempt to colonize the interior of North America. Um, it seems like a really small event, but if, you're, if you keep in mind that Fort San Juan was one of six forts, and these were the first settlements in the interior that, that Spain was attempting, um, and to have all of them destroyed, you know, and from the Spanish documents, it. it it sounds like they were all destroyed at once. And back at Santa Elena, uh, the governor Menendez never really had enough forces and even a stable enough setting there at Santa Elena to ever send anybody out again. The Spanish inability to establish sustained outposts in the interior of La Florida doomed their colonial ambitions. This, combined with the introduction of European diseases to the Indians, opened the door for the English to begin colonizing North America. Without this turning point, hay una buena probabilidad que hablaremos español hoy.